Okay, I've made it into the physics course. This is uh, the screen for physics one, but it would be very similar for physics two or physics three. And I'm wondering, okay, what do I do now? Well, look over here, there's a daily schedule. Let's take a look at that. And here's a daily schedule for this course. It's kind of set up as it would be for a brick and mortar class where you would have two lectures a week, say on a Tuesday and a Thursday. And so here are the two lecture days and then we have an additional Sunday deadline for the quizzes and the labs and deadlines, the blue uh, deadlines for the exams. So those are set in stone as mentioned before. But I can watch these lectures anytime I wish for an online class but suggest that if this were a brick and mortar class that we have Tuesday and Thursday and the first thing I have to do here is watch these orientation videos, which I'm doing. Great. And I need to take this fun quiz, which is in the quiz subfolder of the technical setup. Okay, I will do that. Uh, but I want to get into the material. So here is I have to do chapter one this first week. So let's take a look at chapter one. That would be in the content. If I go in the content, Here's the daily schedule again, just to be redundant because it's so important. I have my technical setup, which will help me get set up for everything else I need to do in this course. And I'm looking for chapter one, so I'm gonna go in here in the chapters. And here's chapter one. So in chapter one, I have a lecture folder, the Essential 10 homework assignment, and a problem set on educations. More about this a little bit later, but let's look at the lecture here. So I have a video uh, on the lecture, and it's a similar lecture that might be given in a brick and mortar class, devoid of any questions, so it's kind of trimmed down. It's the essential material, and if I click on that, hopefully there won't be any kind of breach in the universe for me actually watching myself. Uh, it's kind of in a mirrored fashion. But here's the video of chapter one. At some point, it's kind of sk skipped around. And you can see me talking and um, going through a PowerPoint and possibly working out problems on this lecture. Great. Let's go back. So it would be really nice to have those notes. And here they are. Here's a PDF file of all the lecture notes and all the lecture screens that I talk about in that video. That's great. Well, what are the, in these optional extras? Let's click on that. Well, here's um, a, another PDF file. This one has all the lecture notes in a six per page uh, fashion, which is uh, kind of nice to have, and I can write my extra notes in the margins. So that's neat, I can print that out. And in case the uh, TechSmith Relay video didn't work, here is the same lecture video on YouTube. Now this one, this particular one, would not have the instructor window. If you have to have me talking to you uh, in a positive way, then here's one with the instructor window. But these are redundant options in case the TechSmith Relay videos don't work. You can always go to these YouTube videos, and this is in our optional extras. So those are the lectures, and we can do that for every chapter and on this daily schedule. So we will refer to this daily schedule often. Next week I'm going to do chapter two and those two videos for chapter two. And then I'm going to work the problem set. And I'm going to more on that in a moment. But if I go back in this chapter, either chapter one or chapter two, I have the problem sets. And so I'm going to work out, in the very least, this Essential 10 homework assignment for this problem set. And the problem set PDF is at the top of the folder here. And then I have video solutions for every problem in the problem set. So use those as examples for your working out. And I'm going to talk about that next. So your ultimate goal in a course like this, in a physics course, and any engineering courses to follow is to be able to work a problem to its answer. To do that, you would read a problem, try to understand what it, it is asking for, identify the variables, 
and the possible formula that you would use to solve for the answer and mathematically solve for the unknown. Showing all your steps along the way, starting from the algebraic formula to begin with, and making the proper calculations to an answer. So more important than the answer itself is this solution, this whole uh, process of showing all of your work. Now traditionally, when you take a physics course or an engineering course like this, you would go to class and get some theory and get the concepts and formula and you would be assigned some problems and you absolutely would get no examples and then you'd be told to work on it and it took a lot of time. This is the way I learned physics and it's the way I learned a lot of engineering. Uh, the professors and the books had no examples. They would just give you problems and tell you to work on them and frankly um, it was almost as if they didn't really want you to learn. It was it was some this information was so valuable to them that they want to keep it all to themselves well I want you to learn and here's my method yes we got the theory the concepts and the formula you should definitely know those but we have the problems and all of them are worked out as examples so all the problems in the problem sets have solutions that you can see so you could watch those solutions. First of all, you should try to work a problem, but don't spend hours on it going nowhere. If you, if you get stuck, watch the solution, watch the video solution. And then after you watch that and understand it, close the solution and then reread and rework the problem. If you can't get through the problem, um, go watch the video again, watch the part where you need to understand more close the video and start over. Reread and rework the problem yourself, doing every pen stroke yourself. And then try your hand at a new problem. See if you can work the next problem because the problem sets are designed to be rather similar from problem to problem in, in many cases. So try your hand at the next problem and see if you can do it. And if you can't, look at the solution for that and then close that solution, reread it and rework it to the point where you can do all the work yourself to an answer. Here's how it might work out in practice. We're at the content tab and we go into the chapters and let's just go into one of these chapters and say chapter four here. And here's what I have here. I have some lectures where I'm gonna be given the material and the formula. Uh, I have a central 10 homework assignment here, which I'll talk about in a moment. And then I have the problem set on education videos and a PDF file, the problem set in here as well. And this is so important that I have redundant problem set, the same problem set on YouTube video, just in case the edu education videos don't work for you at some point. So we have this redundant YouTube videos available as well. But if we go in here on the problem set, here I have a problem set PDF. Let's click on that. And let's take a look at a problem here. Uh, let's go back. All right, let's look at problem number two. Your baseball's hit at ground level, uh, blah, blah, blah. So I'm looking at this problem and let's say I can't figure out how high it is when it gets to the fence. So let's go back and I'll look at the solution for problem 4-2. So on the solution, you have me working it out just like you would work it out, step by step, starting from variables here and then the algebraic equation with no numbers in them to begin with. Always do that. And then putting in my known values and then solving for an unknown. In this case, we have uh, two directions, so we have to worry about the x direction and the y direction. And then we come up with an answer. Here our answer is actually 13.5 meters when it reaches the fence. We've got some extraneous information in the x direction here. But there's my solution and this one 
well, it was six minutes long. Most of the solution videos are probably two to five minutes. But I would try to understand, and you hear me talking in these videos when they're going on step by step, try to understand what I did, and then try to recreate it. Reread the problem, close the video solution, and see if you can work it out the same way. If you can't, if you get stuck, watch the solution again. But get to the point where you can do all this work yourself. So basically what we're striving for here in the problem set videos, first of all, is efficiency. We want you to learn the problem and see a solution and try to understand how you go about that solution uh, without you wasting a whole bunch of time. I mean, you can look at a problem first and then look at the videos. And then your next step is proficiency. You want to be able to work out the, all the problems yourself from the beginning algebraic formula to the final answer showing all the steps and all the work along the way. So this is the most efficient way to learn fast and completely in this subject matter. And then when you see a new problem with this kind of proficiency, you'll be able to approach it um, and work it out on your own as well. So that is our goal. So what about these essential 10? Well, honestly, for full mastery of the physics, yes, you want to watch the lectures, you want to read the book, you want to look at the notes, you want to study all that. You don't want to spend all your time on that, though. You want to spend most of your time working problems. And officially, you are assigned all of the problems in the problem set. So. I want you to work all of the problems. Each successive problem will require less time once you get more proficient. And so that is where you want to be. Sometimes we don't have enough time, and I understand that. So each chapter has what I call an essential 10 problem list. That is what I've picked out to be the 10 most representative problems of the material in that chapter. So it covers the basic concepts that will be found and quizzed upon on the quizzes and the exams. When I give a quiz and an exam, I'm not going to look for the most obscure problem and try to quiz you on that just to be, you know, hard on you. I'm going to look for the ones that uh, actually represent the most important material in that chapter, and that basically will be the basic concepts. So in the very least, you should know these essential 10 problems. You should work those out probably first and then start looking at problems that are similar to those and then kind of develop your uh, mastery of the problem set in that way. And that way you, you again will be as very efficient in, in terms of how you are spending your time working problems.